Hi, my name is Ruth Waters. We're in Ocean City, Maryland. And it's a beautiful community to live in. And I live here I, because I think the people make it a great place to live. When I moved here in 1984, I was a hotel manager, and at that time, um, there were not there weren't really salespeople in the hotels here. So after a few years, they realized I had a personality, so they charged me with being in charge of bringing bus groups. Well, the bus groups grew because we put packages together that people not only just visited and had four breakfasts and four dinners and a boat ride, but they also did the whole county and then the tri-county area. We grew a Winterfest celebration and we put up uh, winter lights all over the whole entire town. And one year, I believe, we had over 7,000 visitors in December, which was unheard of. Another thing that we did was we expanded our convention center so that we could have more events. This past year we had our second annual air show, which was in early June, which is not traditionally the best time of year. But we had a 4th of July crowd here at that time. And we've also done numerous uh, car shows, and there's cars and car enthusiasts from all over the place that do a great job here. And one more thing that we did to bring people here in the off season, which created a whole new economy for people, was to develop golf. There's now 11 championship golf courses in the area and 10 par 3 golf courses in the area, which has we have become basically a second Myrtle Beach here in Ocean City, Maryland. We also have formed the largest Parrot Head Club in the country. It's got over 900 members. It started in 1998, and that, they, what we've done in the winter is we have a Parrot Head Mardi Gras, and that puts heads in beds at the hotels, as well as giving everybody a reason to get dressed up and go out and have a really big time. Uh, the Parrot Head's uh, motto is party with a purpose. So even in October, they'll have a big fun fest down here at Ocean City, which again will bring people from out of town to put heads in beds. So from a community action area, that's something. Heads in beds translates to tax dollars. So our, our local tax rate, city tax and, and uh, state tax is 10.5%. So 4.5% of that goes into the county coffer, and they can give that money back to the community. For example, they'll give grants for different things. They gave a grant for Harbor Day at the docks. They gave money for, uh, we have bike week, uh, a whole week long of bikes. And, uh, and it's afforded people to be able to work longer in the season to crack their nut to be able to pay their mortgage. You know, there's not a whole lot of heavy foreclosures around here. And the summer has not been bad. I mean, we've seen a little bit of dip in occupancy, possibly 4%, but in the big scheme of things, you know, as you can see, it's a vibrant oceanfront beach and um, we, we've worked it. The convention center works with the Chamber of Commerce, who works with the HMRA, all together for the collective good of the whole. A big part of how we started was the Hospitality Sales and Marketing Partnership, which was basic, which was a bunch of hotel sales managers. This was in the, the mid-90s. We got together and we met every month. And it was an information sharing thing. Well, you know, we're doing this show, and we're doing this show, and we co-opt together. In other words, when we went to Washington, D.C., it wasn't Ruth with the Hilton or Ruth with the Harrison Group. It was Ocean City, and we had the Clarion there, we had the Princess Bayside there, we had the Harrison Group, we had the Days Inn, all of us in the same booth sharing the same thing so that we look, could buy four or five booths and look like we were bigger than we were. So that's one way that we started doing it. We also did familiarization tours. Familiarization tours, we would bring tour operators into the area and we would actually put them up for free, feed them for free, and you know have a little trade show on the different things in our area that they could indeed do. During the winter, when we had the availability and wouldn't be displacing revenue. We're telling them what was going on all year round. You can come for the Winter Fest of Lights. You can come for a girlfriend's weekend. You can come for Valentine's Day and bring your bus full of people here during those times too because the rates are lower. In the past, everybody acted unilaterally. People didn't, they, they thought that, you know, their competition was right next door. But we found that it wasn't. We were our own best, our own best friends. I mean, you know, the, the old adage, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Why should I deal, duke it out with my, with my hotel next door? Why not team together? And then when the people start calling, with, then we duke it out. When we started this business, we started out doing $300,000 a year. It's now a $5 million business. 
and I don't put heads in beds in the summer because transient vacationers take care of that it's the winter it's the events that we did it's working with the event planners I certainly would give the event planners as many free rooms as they want I've got plenty of free rooms so therefore they would work with me and then they would put on their information or on their sales packet or on their website now the information that would say you um, you know you need to stay at this particular hotel and that's how I got the lion's share of the business. Each year with the Mardi Gras, they do a different local um, charity. One year it was Worcester Gold, which is underprivileged families. This past year it was women supporting wi women. I mean, I would say they've raised close to a million dollars. And they've all gone to local charities because I've arranged bus trips for uh, the, the uh, Lower Shore Red Cross and the Chamber of Commerce in December. Since there's not a whole lot of culture here, I put together two buses each year and we do a little pilgrimage up to New York and see a show, come back the same day, and that raises like $4,000 for each of those organizations, you know, in December when they're, when they're hungry, and it also gets the community together. I learned a long time ago in my career that you know, and when you go to a function or you go to a or you go to a convention, you um you feel better and you have a better time if you're involved. If you're just sitting on the sidelines at a seminar, eh, you know it's okay. But if you're actually working on a committee together, that's how you get to know people. That's how they get to trust you. You get to laugh. So when you go out to the social event, you know, hey, you know, let's you know that that type of thing. I think I stay. I moved here from South Jersey because um. My husband didn't like it there, but regardless, I got here, I thought I'd never stay. I swear I thought I'd stay a year, but as, as I progressed in my career, I thought, this is a wonderful place to raise a child. I never felt, I never felt in danger. I, I mean, I, my, I would even trust my daughter at, at, in this day and age up here on this boardwalk, but um, I never felt this connected to people, not in high school, not in college, and not in my hometown as I have in Ocean City. The community is very generous and gives back, and you know you get what you give, and you give what you, you know. It feels better to give, and as I said, I never thought for a minute I would stay here, but uh, it's the best move I ever made, and I'll never regret it.